This video is just one part of a full series released right here week after week. Subscribe below and hit that bell to make sure you don't miss an episode. Enjoy. Welcome to Med Circle. In this episode, you'll hear from a very resilient young woman living with borderline personality disorder. Sammy Grimm lived through what she calls a chaotic childhood riddled with its own set of challenges in school, family, and mental health. Sammy, I am so thrilled that you're here. Oh my gosh. And so thank excited you. that you're here. Because I've watched you on YouTube mm -hmm. and you're very likable. Thank you. <laughs> you know, that's on YouTube. <laughs> True. And then you walk through the door and you were still likable. Thank you. Yeah, oh so I gosh. feel like you're a, a perfect person to uh, kind of demystify a lot yes. of the stuff surrounding your diagnosis. Mm -hmm. Definitely, yeah. What are you diagnosed with? So I am diagnosed with borderline personality disorder with schizophrenic tendencies. So um, yeah, it's it's been a rough ride, but I'm finally to the point now where I'm like accepting of it mm. um, and just learning more about it. That's like my big important thing that I've been trying to do is to educate myself so I can help other people with it. So why come sit on this couch with me for many hours <laughs> and talk about this to all of these people around the world? I just want to help other people and I know that BPD, like there's tons of um, people that talk about depression and anxiety, which I think is super important, but I feel like there's not enough people talking about BPD mm. or schizophrenia or any of the really big serious illnesses. Um, and I want to be that platform where people can come to, to kind of, you know, unwind and just kind of learn about themselves and to feel comfortable and to, because a lot of times like I felt alone and stuff like that and I don't want anyone else to feel that way so I definitely wanted to be a platform where people can come to and you know learn about themselves yeah. mm -hmm. I think that's such a selfless act Thank and you. giving act but at the same time it's also so helpful for you I would imagine. definitely yeah because when you can help other people you're in turn helping yourself definitely yeah Let's first define what borderline personality disorder is. Okay, so it's an instability with relationships and yourself pretty much. There's nine characteristics in borderline personality disorder, which I have all nine. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know you've done an interview with doctor about that. Mm -hmm. I watched those videos. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. I suffer from all nine of those characteristics. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. I was really excited <laughs> to hear when you came in that you said um, uh, that you had first seen my interview with Med Circle with Encina. I did, before yes. Before we connected Med Circle and, yes. and you together. Yes. So I'm, I'm glad that uh, those videos are reaching people and then that you saw that and felt comfortable enough to come here to do it. Definitely, yeah, yeah. that was an incredible interview. Yeah, I yeah. loved it. Yeah. Me too. Yeah, Me too. it was Encina's so good. wonderful. She was so great. <laughs> so let's talk about you for a little bit. Okay. And then later in the episode, we'll go more into BPD. Where were you okay. born? I was born here in San Diego. Um, I grew up in Florida, in a really small town in Florida um, for a few years and then came back to San Diego. Okay, and why yeah. did you come here? Um, I, well, we moved out and, um, and lived there for like six or so years and then my stepdad got another job out here so we ended up coming back. Okay. Yeah. What was your childhood like? My childhood was very unstable, mm -hmm. I would say. Um, my mom got a divorce with, from my dad when I was like one or so, so I never knew them together, which is fine. I feel like a lot of people, you know, deal with divorce in their lives, you know what I mean? Um, my mom has mental illness as well, so she was very unstable with, you know, her relationships. Um, with my, you know, stepdad, she remarried quite a bit. So it was very rocky growing up. Um, we moved from place to place. Like we never stayed in a place more than a year. So like almost every single year we were moving and I've been to over 14 schools in my life. Yeah. 14 yeah. schools. Yeah. It was super, super unstable. So my dad though, on my dad's side, he was very stable, had a really good job, like super good compared to how my mom was. So when I would go back and forth, I was like, you know, all over the place because I would get stable for a little while with my dad and then I'd have to go back to my mom. So it was pretty rocky, yeah. <laughs> did you think that was normal? I did at one point, I did. But then once I was going to my dad's and seeing like how my brothers were growing up and like how stable they were, I was realizing that 
you know, it wasn't normal for, yeah. you know, what I was going through at my mom's. Um, she also did a lot of drugs and stuff. So like at first I thought that was normal. And then I would go to my friend's house and I would see that there's not drugs, you know, everywhere laying about, you know, it's, it was so different. And um, I raised my sisters pretty much growing up on my mom's side. And it was just craziness all the time. Was your dad aware of the conditions you were living with, with your mother? So, no, I kept it pretty quiet, but just because I was so afraid of being split up from my sisters that I felt like I needed to like not tell anyone because mm -hmm. I, I didn't know exactly, you know, what CPS, you know, entailed. And I was just afraid that CPS was going to get involved and then split us all up and then not know where my sisters were, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so I was just terrified of that. So I definitely kept it a secret up until even probably a few years ago, my dad still doesn't even know, you know, everything that went on, but he knows a little bit. Um, and he was of course upset when he found all this stuff out and, you know, but there's nothing. I was like, I'm not gonna get separated from my sisters. I just refuse, you know? So that was why I didn't say anything. How did that affect you then in, the, in that moment in time? Yeah, I had really bad anxiety as a kid, like so bad. I was always like fight or flight, I guess. And my adrenaline was always up. Um, and I was always like scared. I was super emotional. Anything, if you like said one thing, you know, that was like, I don't know, like mean, I would cry, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? And, and, then I, and then I eventually got very angry um, and I would get into a lot of fights at school. I was always in the principal's office, always either defending someone that was getting bullied or my sisters or, you know, fighting someone. I was always in trouble. Um, so I think that really affected me as a kid, for sure. Were you using drugs? I started using drugs. I had my first sip of alcohol when I was eight. When you were eight. <laughs> yeah, my mom, I'm telling you, my mom had it around the house, so it was always there. So I was like, why not try it? My mom's doing it, why can't I do it, you yeah, know? Yeah. Um, I started using marijuana when I was 12 and then um, started getting into prescription pills when I was in high school. And then I was dealing in high school, my mom's prescription pills because we didn't have like food. So my mom would like spend her husband's like paychecks and stuff on like alcohol and drugs. And then we didn't have anything. So that was like my go-to thing that I was like, okay, I know people that will buy this. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna sell it and then get food for me and my sisters. But yeah. How did that affect your sisters? <laughs> um, pretty, pretty bad. I mean, they, they're really hardworking, you know, at the time and they were really, you know, just trying to get by. I tried to kind of shield them and protect them as mu much as possible. Are but they younger? Yeah, they're a few years younger than I am. Okay. Um, but you know, the, my middle sister, she's only a couple years younger than me. So we kind of both were like, once she got old enough, we were both kind of taking care of the younger one. Um, and we were just trying to protect her as much as possible, but yeah, Did it was they rough. fall into any self-destructive behavior? No, honestly, not as much as I did. They did sports. Like I made sure they went to their practices and you know, the youngest one didn't really do well in school. Um, but otherwise they didn't do drugs. They didn't drink. Like they weren't like partiers like I was, mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, so they did a lot better growing up. I you think you were kind of like a mother to them. It sounds like. Yes. Yeah. Is your mother still alive? Mm -hmm. Do you guys have a relationship? No, I haven't talked to her. It's been three or four years since I've actually talked to her. Yeah, it's How crazy. How do you feel about that? Um, it's, I have like a love-hate relationship about it or like feeling about it, I mm -hmm. guess, um, just because she's so toxic that like you have to get that toxicity out of your life, I feel like. It doesn't matter who it is. It could be family members or not. Um, so I think it's important that you keep that out of your life. But sometimes it is hard, like on holidays or my birthday, you know, I don't hear from her at all. And it's like, is, is it so easy for you to just not talk to your children? You know what I mean? But at the same time, it's like, it's probably better that way, you know? Does she so. talk to your sisters? Mm -mm, no, no, there's a lot of drama, but yeah. So no, she doesn't talk to anyone. What about your dad? Um, so that's a completely different story, but um, yeah, we don't have a relationship either. Oh, you so, don't? Mm -mm, no. Uh, he texted me on my birthday, but that's pretty much it. Yeah, we don't really have a relationship. And what, what happened with that? Well, my stepmom uh, and I just don't get along. It's a long story, but that's pretty much it. And we just have uns 
unstable relationship and I think half of it has to do with my instability with BPD and I think now that I'm older and I can reflect on some of the things that have happened I think I'm to blame for some things but at the same time I think as an adult and as a parent like there's things that they could have done differently Mm -hmm. Um, so I just kind of got fed up with things and was just like I'm not dealing with this anymore it doesn't matter if you're my parent you know, I'm just done. If you're going to be, you know, lame, I'm not going to have you in my life. So yeah. that's pretty much it. <laughs> I, under, I understand that. It's a, it's a tough call to make the choice to cut a family member mm-hmm. out of your life. It's so hard. But if they're not adding value and if they're, like you said, are toxic, mm-hmm. it often is the best choice. Yep. And it's a very hard choice to make, for sure. Because I have people that ask me all the time, how, how do you do it? And I, I don't know, it's so difficult. But eventually you have to get fed up enough to where you're like, I don't deserve this, right. you know? So. Right. And do your sisters have a relationship with them? No. Mm-mm. What about you and your sister? Yeah, we talk all the time, okay. yeah. So they are in Florida right now mm-hmm. with um, my youngest sister's dad. So they all live together okay. um, out there. But yeah, they're doing really well. (laughs) Well, in this stage of your life, Mm -hmm. you didn't know you had BPD. Right. Were you seeking out any mental health treatments? Um, I didn't start seeking out um, any treatment until I was 19 when I finally knew that like I knew there was something going on because How did I was, you know that though? I was so angry and I was in a really toxic relationship and I would go from zero to a hundred and go from totally fine to a rage within an hour. You know what I mean? Like it would, I would be really crazy at one point and then be fine within the next 15 minutes. So it was super unstable and I knew something's off. I'm punching holes in walls I'm breaking doors. I'm, you know, rage all the time. So (laughs) you didn't think, Oh, well it's because I'm dating this guy who's really toxic. Yeah. I no, I didn't. You knew it was something deeper than that. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. That's really powerful. Yeah. Because as people, we look for reasons, right? Mm -hmm. I'm angry because I'm in traffic. I'm sad because this person called me this name or whatever. Right. So if, so the natural instinct I believe for people is to point at something right. else on why they are feeling that way. But you did the mm-hmm. very brave thing mm-hmm. and the very honest thing of pointing at yourself yeah. and saying, I'm, I need help. Yep. Yep. Well, and I had seen my mom growing up have these mental problems and she never took care of it. So I was always like, I'm not going to be that way. I want to know what the problem is so I can fix it mm-hmm. type thing. So I finally got enough courage to go to the doctor and start figuring it out. But that's why, that's what motivated me was my mom not getting treatment or being off and on treatment. And I was just like, I don't want that for my life. It's so unstable, you know? So that's you what that I was saying. 19 years old. Yeah. <laughs> to me, a 19 year old is still a child. Yeah. Like, let alone they understand, they don't, they, the fact that you have that self awareness mm-hmm. is incredible to me. Thank you. <laughs> do you recognize that or do you think, no, that's just, no, that's a course? Um, I don't know. I, I, yeah, I guess not. I wasn't self-aware at 19. <laughs> yeah, I was just like, boop boo like walking around, like no idea what's going on. And you actually took it into your own hands. Mm-hmm. Uh, now you went to a doctor. Yes. A primary care physician. Um, yes, I did. I haven't had insurance like my whole life, mm-hmm. so I didn't even know where to start. Mm-hmm. So I did my research and I went to a regular doctor and then they, um, told me to go to a psychiatrist That's good. and then just down the line got went to a psychiatrist and a therapist and I completed an interview with Dr. Judy Ho on substance abuse and depression mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. during that interview we learned that about 74% of people first go to a primary care doctor to get mm-hmm. a mental health uh, help yep and while your doctor did the right thing of mm-hmm. referring you to a psychiatrist there are many primary care physicians who just write you a script right then and yeah. there and send you on your way, yeah. m- perhaps not properly diagnosing you. Right. You went to this psychiatrist, mm-hmm. you didn't get the right diagnosis. Right, yeah. What diagnosis did you get? Bipolar. Bipolar. Mm-hmm. Which often happens with people with BPD is they get misdiagnosed with bipolar disorder, oftentimes. Ex- explain what bipolar disorder is. So bipolar disorder is, from, from what I know, going mm-hmm. from zero to 100 
real quick, like just being super happy and then angry. But with BPD, it can go within the hour, I guess. Mm -hmm. I don't know exactly how to explain it, but um, just having instability with your emotions and your mood. So you can be manic for hours and be up and, you know, happy and getting a lot of things done. And then it can, that can last for days. Mm -hmm. um, and then all of a sudden you can be down for days as right. well. So I, I know there's a lot of mania with it. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what they thought I was having with like me going in a rage and everything. Um, they thought I was just being manic, mm -hmm. um, which was not the case. <laughs> well, uh, in our med circle series with Dr. Sportelli, we mm -hmm. go into the details of bipolar one and bipolar two disorder. Mm -hmm. So for med circle members, make sure you check that out. This misdiagnosis caused mm -hmm. you to seek out or get the wrong type of treatment, exactly. which of course I'm assuming did not help your situation <laughs> at all. Exactly. So in our next episode, we're going to dive in to what that misdiagnosis was more in depth and also what that did to Sammy, the brave girl, <laughs> self-aware at 19. <laughs> Are you self-aware right now? Come see our second episode, medcircle.com. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. If you liked what you just saw, then why not subscribe? Click right here for new episodes and new series every week. And to access exclusive mental health videos that we only release at medcircle.com, check out the links below.